Hello my friends and welcome to today's tarot reading. This is a general daily reading for all signs. But the sign that you are here means that there is, probably means that there is a special message for you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Sorry about that, a little bit distracted. I was setting my timer. Um, so today is the 15th of um, September 2022. It is a Thursday, the day of intention and desire, the day to put forward um, whatever you want to set into motion. Now, I don't know if you've heard recently, but there's been some uh, things online that have said that just to kind of take it easy in terms of um, doing something... I think it's until the 24th of September in terms of some energy portals that have opened up. Um, I'm definitely feeling that. Um, so just be aware of that. I would say, yeah, it, it said basically don't start anything new until after the 24th of September. Um, so, yeah, just to keep that in mind. Um, there's no major aspects today. Where is the moon today? The moon is in Gemini. So... Um, yeah, um, I f I'm feeling a Gemini vibe, even though, like, <sighs> there's some heavy energy, like, floating around. This Gemini energy is helping us, the Mars and Gemini energy is really helping us to kind of, like, bring things forward, to be able to um, take action, um, to just uh, have a little bit more of a light-hearted nature towards ourselves. And I think that that light-hearted nature is going to help with the heaviness of everything that is surrounding us at the moment. Because, boy, there is some heavy stuff happening. But anyway, enough of my rambling. Let's see what the cards have to say today. I'm reading with the Rainbow Heart Tarot. I'll be clarifying with the Prism Oracle. So let's get into the reading today. Dear Spirit, what messages would you like to convey to the collective today? Okay, so we've got the Seven of Wands, the Knight of Wands reversed. We've got the Three of Swords reversed. We got justice reversed again. Same like yesterday. We've got the King of Cups reversed. Yeah, I'll take him. Right, okay, so we've got the devil reversed. We've got the King of Pentacles. Look at all these kings. Kings. King of Pentacles reversed and the Ten of Swords. So, there is a big ending, but it's not as, um, it's not as heartbreaking as you may have thought. Look at that, the world as well, I'll take that as well. Um, so, yeah, it's not as heartbreaking as you thought it was going to be. Maybe you thought it was going to be worse <laughs> than you actually thought it was going to be. Um, it's almost like you can see the, the the kind of in the pain you can see the the benefit of what the pain is it's almost like you've had this release um from this um kind of uh I, i'm feeling like um like a kind of addictive energy um i'm feeling more kind of sexual if anything but it's almost like there's a denial of the heart and also um, a holding back, not going forward with something. You've got the King of Pentacles and the King of Cups here. So there's a denial of emotion and a denial of... Um, it's interesting because I usually attribute the Devil upright to the King of Pentacles. Reversed. But here it's... Exceptionally male-dominated energy. Exceptionally male-dominated energy. What I'm also sensing is that there's an end to this male-dominated energy. Yeah. Okay, I think I know what's going on. So basically, like, we've got this, this, this cycle, and it's a woman as well, and she's holding the batons of the magician. She has the four um, elements in her corner, um, the four elements of manifestation so she is able to synthesize so basically is this almost like this return to the sacred feminine after having this kind of like bullshit of the of the masculine um kind of just running amok um 
I feel, particularly with this Seven of Wands, um, usually with Seven of Wands I would see it in a very different way, but because of this deck and because we have that Phoenix rising, a lot of pinks, reds, you know, the Kundalini energy kind of rising, I'm feeling that, that, that kind of the divine union but of the Shakti, like this whole kind of rising of energy that is like coming up um, and it's been suppressed. It has been suppressed. The Knight of Wands I'm seeing as a, as a, as a force. Um, and I think it's because due to the pressure of the heartache that has occurred and the suppression of like the kind of female which we see here with the iris and it's also blue as well, which is what, this is male actually. Um, and it's interesting because what I'm feeling is that with this kind of like misdirected male energy we're getting and, and this suppression of the female, we're getting actually the uprising of the female, which is really interesting, particularly with the seven of pentacles and she's pregnant. Um, and also, you know, and it's, I did a reverse. It seems to me like there's a possibility of giving birth. So if you know anybody that's giving birth, um, send them love. Um, but I'm also sensing that, you know, it's the idea of like where we've had the, the, the base chakra in such a high position, like we do with the King of Pentacles. And I feel like these two are testing the universe and they're, they're going to get their, you know, and they've, they've managed to get their own way for a long time and they've managed to get their own way. But with the devil reversed, times are changing, particularly with these three here. But with this um, uh, top chakra here, um, it tells me that there's like a, a reverting of the energy. So the, so the, the base ego is actually what's ruling the head. Um, and this would also like say about this as well, I would say. And um, we do also have the Ten of Swords, rever um, the Ten of Swords upright. That it does seem quite dark at the moment. I'm not gonna lie. Yesterday's reading was quite um, intimidating in that respect. But I do feel like there is um, there is a reversal of energy that's occurring. Um, if you have felt that things have been unfair, yeah, they have been. They have been. I'm gonna. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna. I'm gonna back you up here, and I'm gonna say, yeah, they have been really unfair. Like how things have happened. But trust me, karma will. You're rising. Like this is. This is like no matter what. What goes up must come down. What goes down must go up. It's just standard. Yeah. So I think that that's really important to remember. And even though there seems like kingly oppressive energies that are enforcing certain opinions, certain things, this, th these don't even have to be like people. These could be forces. These could be like, say, for example, if you'd like, say, for example, you'd applied to a couple of banks for some loans or something like that. And, um, you know, you applied to two men and then they both denied you or like two females that are like the head of those banks. And they, they have to be quite like, you know, um, like one of them's quite uh, flippant with their um, emotions and also uses their emotions to exert authority and power, particularly when they're in a bad mood. Um, King of Pentacles or emotionally manipulates. Um, you've got the King of Pentacles reverse, which almost uses power, almost uses uh, financial abundance and wealth in order to manipulate. So you, so I wouldn't be surprised if like that bank analogy would be interesting or a company, CEO, CFO, something like that. Um, you know, and they are, they're withholding stuff, you know, they're withholding things. And it's causing this kind of like, you know, this energy where it's like, Okay, this is really painful, but I'm actually seeing what's going on. I can see what's happening and the tears, the tears are going to stop falling now. They're going to my head, so I'm understanding what this sadness actually means, why it's hurting me so much. The swords are falling out and you're starting to be able to heal from the wounds because you're embracing your divine feminine. You've also got the devil reversed as well, which I just feel like that's like um, maybe stopping being under the spell of these two and also being um, subject to the fact that you think that you're at the mercy of justice because... Of course, justice is justice, you know, there's nothing you can do about it, there's that, that thing, but you can choose how you decide to react to it, um, you can choose how you're going to react to it, and sometimes, just sometimes, anger, and I, I know there's like mixed reactions on anger, but it's interesting because I'm feeling it in this reading, I'm feeling really charged as, I've as I'm reading this. Anger is really useful when it's channel channeled in the right way. It's really useful. Um, it makes us get th gets things done. 
Um, and as I said at the beginning of this reading, I don't think it's advisable to start anything that's new, but any projects that you have started and you need to finish, do it, you know, do it. Because that needs to be done before the end of, you know, it, within this um, Mars Gemini phase. Because if that momentum doesn't continue, you're going to find that you're not going to be able to finish it. You Or you might find it that way. I'm not going to say that it's, you know, you're at the mercy of the stars. But I'm just saying it's advisable to do it. Um, you don't have to do anything. Don't have to listen to this. Don't have to, you know, this is all about free will. You know, we're all human beings with free will. So, you know, we just follow what we follow. But, yeah, I just feel like, I feel like there's been a real oppression. Um... There's been a lack of being able to move forward because you've got oppressive oppressive situations, oppressive people, oppressive energies that are coming on top of things, causing people to fight amongst themselves. But what they don't realize is that this is almost like a generation of energy that kind of allows you to rise up above this, to rise up above your own ghosts and then be like, right, I'm going to create a new cycle for myself because I can see what the pain is actually like giving me. And I'm, you know, there's a lot of pain. But it's almost like it's, you know, it's mental. And I think because you've come over that and then now you've gone into the Three of Swords or vice versa, whichever one you want to, you know, I think that's falling out so that you can actually traverse to this Ten of Swords. That's a big jump, you know, seven cards. But you're doing it. That means that you've already managed to evolve. Interesting how we have seven here, seven of pentacles. So it's almost like you're, you know, you've done the work already. So you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, and now you're moving towards, like, you're moving towards, right, okay, I, I know this. I've been here before. I understand this oppressive energy. I get it. I get it. So, right, let me just hightail it out of there. Let me just, or let me see what I've got to do in order to, like, cope in the best way and get over this cycle. Wow, so we've got two cards here. We've got fear. Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's going to be the title for today's video. Oh, wow. An illumination. So we've got a, a doorway and a window or you've got like two openings. Isn't it interesting? Sometimes the very thing that we fear. Ah, really interesting as well. The Obstacle is the Way. That's an amazing book by Ryan Holiday. I do really like Ryan Holiday. He's really cool. Um... And um, he uses like stoicism in order to um, kind of give advice. It's really cool. So I think that's going to be the title of today's reading. The way is the obstacle. Um, or the obstacle is the way. But, you know, this element of fear um, can really illuminate us into a space where we, know, we, we understand where we need to go. Where we have to kind of move forward, work forward, um, walk forward. Um, the image that is coming to mind is a, t a children's television series. You can YouTube it. And I used to watch it all the time. I used to love it. I used to like run home to like watch it um, on Fridays. <laughs> it was like Friday afternoon because obviously that's the best day of the week because the weekend is happening and like school is over and yay. And um, yeah, it was called Nightmare, spelt with a K, N-I-G-H-T-M-A-R-E. And um, basically, someone put on a helmet, right? So you had four kids, and someone put on a helmet, and then they walked around, and they had to be guided around this dungeon um, and avoid pitfalls, but they were guided, but they were blind. So they, they had this helmet on their head. They had to go and pick up things, but then their um, their teammates, like, guided them. Like, said, oh, yeah, step three steps to the left or three steps to the right, step forward, pick up this thing, blah, blah, blah. I loved it, and it was really kind of atmospheric and cool. Um, the dungeon master always made it really cool. I loved it. Um, but this is what this reminds me of. Sometimes you don't see... <laughs> nice little aside there into my childhood um this is what you know you step through the door and you don't know what's on the other side but what's really interesting is that you are gonna experience some kind of illumination that you never anticipated because you know i, I just feel it particularly with this you know and particularly with this jump from the three to the ten of the gap of the seven and this kind of like transition with this seven of wands as well, the seven of wands. So it's this, 
this this seven steps of really uh you know understanding yourself between these two so you can get to this point quicker and that's the also the yardstick of um spiritual development like how quickly you get over things so for example like if something oh you, you know a really bad event happens to you and then you're able to maybe not completely recover and we're not talking about like papering over certain um responses um and being able to like allow yourself like like just you know oh yeah I'm over it kind of thing like say for example you went through like a big breakup and you know you're really upset about it but then it's like actually hang on I've got my life and I'm, I've got other things to be dealing with and not only that I was a you know you, you remember who you were before that not only that your time um getting over the breakup is so much faster than you than it was before or it's a lot easier than it was before or very different and you notice that so I think that that's that's the yardstick also if you have an argument with someone and then you find that you're not as angry anymore or you find that you're reacting differently or something like that it's 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 those kind of reactions that give you the yardstick to how much your spiritual work is really actually becoming a value in your life and i think that that's something to to take note of it's the um it's it's the spiritual maturity as i would call it but anyway I think that's the message I've got for you today. A really good empowering message for today, despite the odds, you know, despite the odds, we can overcome this, my darlings. We can do this. We can do this. And trust me, I probably will be going off and crying in a corner at some point. But you know what? Cry, cry for about half an hour, come back and be like, right, I'm back. So, you know... <laughs> anyway my darlings thank you so much to all of my returning subscribers please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and um, it really helps my channel out um and gets it out there to people that need to see it um also um do hit the, um, the notification bell as well because i post every day um but otherwise have a beautiful beautiful day again thank you so much to all of my returning subscribers and all of you that comment it really makes the world and i love the conversation that goes on down there take care have a beautiful day and i'll speak to you soon Bye.